we're back. What is going on, guys? And welcome back to another episode of Police Cars. Today we're out in the middle of the Everglades. I literally have no reception on my phone and we're gonna be riding with one of the most requested agencies here on Police Cars and that is, hold on, they're coming right now. So as you guys can see, FWC is rocking some pretty sweet vehicles. Uh, they got all kinds of trucks, SUVs. Uh, but today, we're mainly gonna focus on that airboat, Big Bertha. And uh, she's waiting for us, guys. Is that Ronnie? Yes, sir. There he is. There he is. Nick. What's up, my brother? I didn't think I'd see y'all here in the Everglades. Yeah, right. This is far, man. It is, it is. It's far away from home. It's nice and hot, too. I, I lost signal about 12 miles back down that way. Okay, well, that's what we got these things for. Ah, I yeah. see that. That lets everybody know where you're located at. So you want to introduce yourself to the Knot Squad? Well, for those of you that don't know, I'm Officer Ronald Washington with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. I'm the public information officer and I work out in North Miami. So I see somebody else who's driving this car here. Is that your partner? Yeah, there he is. There he is, hiding back there. What's up, my friend? Nada. How you doing, Nick? Nice to meet Very you. Nice. I'm uh, Officer Bobby Doobie. I am also with the uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, uh, stationed uh, down in the Florida Keys. Oh, all the way from the Keys. Yes, I'm up here uh, helping my brothers uh, out here. Gonna go out on patrol here in Everglades National Park. Nice. See what we can uh, show your uh, nod squatters. Nice. Uh, you were mentioning this little this this locator little, uh, device, doohickey thing right there. Yeah, that's the EPIRB. Uh -huh. So if you, anything anything oh, happens nice. to you, you know you, you want to have this on mm -hmm. and working. So it, is it basically a GPS? Basically, yeah. Let's it lets Coast Guard know where you're at. Coast Guard will notify the local authorities so we can send out a rescue crew to come find you and your family. Uh -huh. We're not going to tell them where they can pick it up because I think my wife watches this and she'll definitely <laughs> want to purchase one of those for me to wear. That's no bueno. <laughs> so, uh, why is it important for you guys to wear one of those things? I mean, why don't you guys put try so well, you guys you are partners? There's, there's no buildings here. There's uh, just this one cell tower and that pretty much lets you know where you're at. So, we're going to be in a super remote area and Although we let dispatch know where we're at, it's good to have this as a backup in case they need to come find us. I see you guys have some other equipment there in your hands. Yes, well we're gonna we're gonna be going out on patrol today out there. Of course, it's a state law that we have a life jacket on uh, when we're gonna be out there uh, patrolling. Uh, it's one of our policies, but it's, you have to have a life jacket when you're on your boat. And the airboats are very loud, so we're bringing some uh, ear protection. And it's a good thing we're you know this airboat goes pretty fast, so you want to have eye protection out here. So let me ask you because. Back in the day, big bulky orange life preservers. Now we got these things that almost look like a belt. Yes, uh, these are life jackets that uh, you can get at West Marine, Bass Pro Shops. Now these are the these is a you know got many brands, but uh, this has a CO2 cartridge in it. So if you were to fall out of the boat or get ejected out of the boat, it has a CO2 cartridge in it, and it will automatically inflate. It also has a self-inflator uh, that you can just pull this, and the whole life jacket will inflate. And uh, you know it could save your life out there on the underwater because uh, as you'll see when we go out here, it's very desolate, mm -hmm. and uh, you probably won't see a whole lot of, of boats out there. Uh, so you want to make sure you have uh, all these safety precautions with you. So uh, I just noticed that you guys brought backup over here. You want to introduce your uh, backup, Steve Gabriel. What's up, right. man? Nick Get a Gabriel Fernandez, FWC. Oh, nice to meet you. And what about you, man? Steve, how's it going? Nice to meet you, my friend. So you're going to be the captain for the day. Yes, sir. All right. Let's boogie.
pointing and we stopped. What's going on? Well, good thing we're not stranded. We're actually waiting for our pilot to come by and swing and say hi. Pilot? Like a helicopter pilot? He's a little bit of both, but today he's in our plane. Do you have a visual yet? Please tell me that we could do a follow-up with that guy right there. Not squad. Yes, for you, we can. Anything. For you. All right. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> to go fishing, to go hunting, recreating, and they just spend the weekends out at these camps. All right, so I noticed, and we're gonna to talk to our captain right here, Steve, uh, when we were driving, you were, you, like, you were in like an inch of water? Yes, sir. So how, how does, how much, so how deep does it have to be for you to be able to drive this thing on, uh, I guess, water, or? This needs very little water, and this boat will run on dry ground. It'll run on dry ground? Yes, sir. I noticed that when we were driving, every now and then, the, the boat would go a little to the side like that. Is that what we were hitting land, or what was that? Yeah, we were hitting dry ground. Dry ground. So, uh, obviously, Everglades, wetlands, is it vary from, from seasons? Like, does it get deeper in some seasons? Yeah, we're, we're coming up to our wet season now. It's still pretty dry, so we're waiting for rain right now. Yeah. You can actually see the water line on some of these cypress trees. If you look at the cypress trees, there's a darker water line. That's as high as the water typically gets out here oh. during the wet seasons. That's where it's going to be exposed pretty much all year round. And then the dark, when it's wet, um, the water rises up to that dark uh, line right there between where the light meets the dark. And that's, I get. I guess these guys are saying that's the highest it gets, huh? Yeah, big lid. Tipper. Tour guide. Tourists on it. You know why they have that orange flag, right? The orange flag is for pure visibility so that other boats can see you through the vegetation coming. Oh. And I noticed it got really tight in there at times. Yeah, as you can see, there's no uh, lines on the highways yep. uh, out here, so it's uh, all wide open. So, we, you know, safety is uh, of most importance for. For us out here in the Everglades, and, and we, you know, we have those so we can prevent some tragedies happening. All right, guys, we're stopped at another camp. Hold on, I gotta take these off. Holy us. <laughs> When you have the earmuffs on, you don't know. It's the, a little different. It's a little different. Yeah, you you. yeah. So we stopped at another camp, and apparently out here, there's a lot of uh, little privately owned land pieces, and they build camps out here. And hey, so how does one go about purchasing land? Do I got to bring my real estate agent up here, and then I can uh, bid for one, or how does that work? That's not gonna happen. These camps, uh, they're scattered about here uh, in the Everglades. The River of Grass are passed down uh, or inherited by generation to generation. So. You either have to know somebody or be a family member to be able to come out here and uh, and and step foot on these camps out here. So if I was if I was to own like gas stations and I wanted to build a huge like above water gas station out here, would I be able to or no? No, that's not gonna happen. No, no commercialization out here in the glades. All right, so I see you back here. You're the man driving, and uh, where's the where's the steering wheel, Steve? Right here. That's it. One stick. That's it. That's it, so how does it work? Forward, turns the boat right. Okay. When I pull back, turns the boat left. Genius. Very simple. That's it? <laughs> Very simple. And I'm assuming that that's the gas pedal right there? Sure. So gas pedal and a stick. That's it? That's all you need. And, and what are we running back there? Is that thing a hammy? It's got over 800 horsepower. Woo! 
<laughs> 800 horsepower. And uh, where are we spinning back there? The props. Twin sentience. Okay. How fast do you think uh, the boat can go? More or less? About 60. 60? But well, we don't think it's 60. <laughs> So Steve, I noticed you have some lights hooked up over here. Usually we take uh, the vehicles to a shady spot to show off the lights, but yeah, I don't think there's any shady spots out here. Um, so how do you work the controls? It looks a little more intricate than driving it. You got a lot more switches yeah. than just a stick and a pedal. You got a whole bunch of switches and uh, gears over here. How does that work? I have my nav lights. Okay. As my white all around and my red and green for the front. Okay. And my white light for visibility at night. And then my blue light. So obviously uh, lights, it's bright out here. You're not using them during daytime. One can only assume that you're using them for night patrol, correct? For night patrol and in case of emergency situations where we need to do search and rescue. Kind of like uh, that conversation we had earlier about the airplane that went down. Yes, uh, many years ago, uh, the value jet crash, a lot of people uh, remember that tragedy that happened out here, uh, not too far from where we're at right now. And that's one of the reasons why we got one of these uh, specialized uh, pieces of equipment, this airboat that can take a lot of people, a lot of equipment. This uh, airboat actually can uh, fold down and drive uh, side by side or four wheelers uh, up onto the airboat. Uh, it can fit a lot of gear. Real quick for the audience, because I already know the answer. What's a side by side? Side by side are like the golf carts on steroids. Oh, the uh, big Polaris the, things. The big Polaris things. Uh, you could fit, you know, two, four, six people on there, and we could uh, drop this ramp right here, drive it on board with some uh, specialized equipment, and take you out to the the accident scene. As you can see, there's no uh, highways out here. There's no traffic lights, no street signs. So uh, if something bad does happen out here or search and rescue, uh, the FWC is the one uh, they call. All right, guys. So I'm gonna jump up on these uh, these docks here to get you guys some sweet B-roll, and Steve's gonna bring us up. How long have you been driving these airboats? Pretty much all my life, I've been around airboats. So before you be joined the FWC, you were driving airboats. Yes, sir. Right out of diapers. Not that early. Oh, okay. <laughs> guys every time we get up the seat raises in temperature about 100 degrees so that seat right now is about 200 225 degrees it's hot very hot it's we very hot three seat warmers out it's here. yeah it's yeah. definitely seat warmers <laughs> Woo! That's pretty sweet man it's a good gig so how, how are you liking it how long you been on for? loving it what's not to love about being out here how, how long you been on for five years five years yes sir five years and counting and uh, some of you guys might know where Ron's from. They might know a little bit of background. But Ron here is, is on America Ninja Warrior. So 
<laughs> tell me a little bit about that, or can you talk about it? The top secret, because I know you got a season coming up. Just a little, just a little touch on it. Wednesday, June fifth at eight p.m. on NBC. All right, there's your so, plug. Boom. So either I got to hurry up and edit it, or you guys got to go back and rewatch it. One or the other. I don't yeah. know if I'm. Gonna It'll be, able to be get online. Rough. Okay. Bam. I know we just unloaded our gear and everything and we put it down here in this nice picnic table, but there is a house right there and I'm assuming they don't see a lot of uh, residents around this area. Are they cool? They, they know what's up? They yeah, no one really lives out here full time. They come out here on the weekends for recreating and okay. there's all these are one of the privately owned camps. There's one across the water over there too. You'll be able to see it. And there's a bunch from here north in a Broward. Okay. And they, people just come out here. It's like their vacation home on the weekends. Nice. You get away from uh, the city. Water front, water rear, water yep. side. <laughs> Gotta get a little wildlife. I know it's not as large as a gator, but that looks like it. Growing up in Florida, I want to say that's a skink. Yeah. But hey, as long as we see life out here, right? That's why we're out here, do welfare checks. If the plants and animals are doing good, we're doing good. Oh man, that, that right there is like a TV commercial. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for real. Now hiring. It's serious, man. That now hiring. Check out the beauty. You never know what you're going to see out here. It's full of life. The river of grass, baby. That's it. River of grass. Come Fun to fact. Florida. Come to Florida. Fun fact. That's not, uh, well, that's a river, guys. Largest it's real river. slow, like the clouds. That's it. Slow moving river. Real gentle. Moves about three feet per day. Just made that up, but I'm pretty sure that's close to what it is. Yeah, you fact checkers will find out on your own. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you took me to see the camp. Now where are we going, guys? Headed back to the boat ramp, boss. All right, let's go. That gator, he gets to live in his own native habitat and do his thing. They've been around a lot longer than we have. They're living fossils. So unless they're in your swimming pool or in your backyard, FWC is not gonna get involved. Okay, so he's out here, he's at his home. Yeah. Not bothered, 31 miles away from Miami. Basically, we drove to his house. Pretty much. So he gets to stay. Yeah, we, we like to cohabitate, enjoy the gator's habitat and sometimes they enjoy ours and we gotta bring them back to where they belong. All right, so while we're waiting for the guys to pull out the, the boat, I got a fun little segment that I'm gonna start with you guys. A true or false segment. You ready for it? And you guys can play along too. Just put start your answers. Start the timer. Put your answers down below in the comments uh, and what you believe true or false. All right, ready? Here we go. I know a little bit about the, uh, the wildlife out here. I'll do the best I can. Okay, here we go. Florida is the only place in the world where crocodiles and alligators live together in the environment. Wow. True or false? I'm gonna say true. True? Ding, ding. Ding, ding. Well, obviously you know that. <laughs> All right, moving over to my man Ronnie over here. What do you got for me, Nick? Okay. True or false? There's pythons, non-native, that live out in the Everglades. True or false? That's a yes. That's a yes. A resounding yes. A resounding yes. Funny you say that, uh -huh. Nick. Come take a walk with me over ah, here. Where are we going? Where are we going? The Burmese python. There it is. We encourage you guys, the Nod Squad, to go out there and safely remove and pick up these pythons. If you can remove them the most and the bigger ones, we actually have a reward program designed to encourage and incentivize your participation. So that means capture and bring back or is it like hunting? 
capture, take a picture of it. There's some rules that you can go it, as far as details, go on our website and check it out if you're interested in it. But get a quick B-roll shot of this. Right. You can go to pythons at myfwc.com or myfwc.com slash python. Right. Next contestant on the true or false environmental quiz. I hope you guys are playing along down in the comments. Okay, is it true that we have an invasive species in Florida called the snakefish, and you guys actually encouraged the removal of this species. Yeah, it's actually, it's called the snakehead. Oh, correction! That's, that's, the answer is false! <laughs> the answer is false, wise guy! <laughs> it's snakehead! All right, go ahead. So in mainly South Florida, you do have a population of snakehead in the freshwater canals, and we do encourage you to remove them from the canals. And that, in turn, has same with the python over the years, whether it be a natural disaster that caused them to be released to our ecosystem or people inadvertently throwing them into the water or illegal shipment of them has all caused it to be prolific in our subtropical environment down here in South Florida. So, riddle me this. How can one become an FWC law enforcement officer? I'll take it from here. So, if you've uh, watched uh, the video here on the Knot Squad and you need a change of a pace, a new career, you know, and you can see yourselves wearing one of these uniforms out, you know, patrolling in the Everglades here in Florida or out offshore in a boat. We have all kinds of specialized equipment from, from airboats to wave runners. You know, look us up online at myfwc.com. Gabe, you're out? Yep, I'm out. Leaving the party? Yep, nice meeting you. Nice night. meeting you, man. That was awesome. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. Steve, you're out of here? I'm out. Go ahead to the house. See you, Cap. <laughs> <laughs> and a mini worker. Yeah, Cap, appreciate it. So sorry. Thanks. Uh, be Thanks. safe, man. Thanks for the safe voyage. And then there were two, just where we started. So, um, guys, I know you guys have planes, trains, automobiles, all kinds of stuff, and this is just a tip of the iceberg of the awesomeness that is FWC. So what do you say to a follow-up, huh? Absolutely, no Absol question. No question. So, guys, follow-up, like, comment, uh, share. If you're interested, FWC is hiring. Go over to the website. I'm going to link everything down below. And it's that time in the video where we do the challenge coin giveaway. Ronnie, did you let me down or, or you came through? You looking for this, Nick? Oh, there it is. There it is. Here's our shiny new challenge coin with our badge on the front. And turn it around. You'll see our logo. Same thing right here with the motto, Patrol, Protect, Preserve. There Would you like one? I would definitely like one. But well, guess one, what? Oh. Guess what? what? I got something for you guys. Uh -oh. I got something for you guys right there. First time ever on police cars. All right, guys, I haven't really announced these yet. But here, one for you. Thanks, one Nick. for you. And then these two here, you can give one to Gabe or Steve. Gabe or Steve. Official first trade. You ready? Let's do it. Bam. Bam. Yeah. You guys could win one of these too. You gotta follow the steps down below. Now, did you print any okay. other money with this? No. Bam, there okay. it is. And the backside. You Nick off duty. Button. Boom, with the YouTube and the thin blue line. There it is. We got it. Boom, first agency to get it. Thanks so much. All right, now the phone calls start from the other guys. Where's my coin? <laughs> if I did a little tongue tied uh, tongue twister there and you don't understand what I just said, I'm gonna put all the instructions down below where you can just click the link. I just make it easy, step one, step two, step three. It's all there in the links below. Good? Sweet. You got it. All right, so you know how to sign off? All right, so hit them with the sign off. I'll see you when I see you. And if I don't see you, then I'll see you. All right, guys, we're out. Yeah. American Ninja Warrior, they always have cool names. What's uh, what's yours? Dynamite! Oh, like JJ! Dynamite! Dynamite! Go, baby. Outstanding.